In today's Our Region's Business Online Extra, severely ill coronavirus patients may be able to breathe easier thanks to a technology developed right here in our region. The Food and Drug Administration has granted an emergency use authorization to A-Lung Technologies to use its Hemolung respiratory assist system to treat COVID-19 patients. The medical device is still undergoing trials here in the United States. Pete DeComo is back with us. He is chairman and uh, CEO of, of Along. And Pete, great to see you. Good to see great you. Great to see you again, Bill. Thanks uh, for inviting me. Happy to talk to you. This is really exciting news, uh, I think, for Along and obviously for people that are victimized uh, by COVID-19. Uh, first, maybe we should describe what, what the Hemolung is exactly and what it does. Well, the Hemolung is actually an artificial lung. You may see a, a, an illustration of it behind me. Uh, the canister in red right behind my shoulder is the artificial lung. And basically, uh, we're doing what we've trademarked to, to call a respiratory dialysis. So we basically take blood uh, from the patient's vein. We run it through our artificial lung. Our primary objective is to remove carbon dioxide for those patients in respiratory distress, put a little oxygen in it, and return it back to the body. And so patients that... Uh, can no longer breathe adequately on their own, our lung does up to 50% of the work of the native lung. And, and it, it is in current clinical trials here in the United States. You've wrapped trials in the United Kingdom, right? Uh, we are currently uh, conducting a trial here in the United States. Uh, and that trial has been underway for a couple of years now. And uh, it slowed quite a bit, as you might imagine, as a result of COVID. In 19 because the uh, 36 academic medical centers that we're involved with are consumed with uh, treating COVID-19 patients currently. And so how did this then begin to migrate to actually treating COVID-19 patients rather than, you know, rather than the trial? It's a good question. You know, uh, COVID-19 patients manifest themselves in terms of their respiratory failure and the, or their lung failure much the same way in which our patients in both of these clinical trials manifest themselves. They get into resp respiratory distress. Oftentimes, uh, the first manifestation is carbon dioxide retention. Uh, we as humans produce carbon dioxide as a normal byproduct of metabolism. And when they get into resp respiratory distress and can't breathe adequately on the, their own, that CO2 accumulates in the body and in the blood and affects the acidity of the blood, so on and so forth. And so uh, many of our institutions were requesting emergency use of our device uh, for the treatment of COVID-19 patients. And they're permitted to do that under FDA guidelines. Uh, however, we went to the FDA and asked for what's called emergency use authorization, which basically, uh, if you get it, the FDA is clearing you for uh, treatment of COVID-19 patients specifically, and indicates that they believe, even though your device is not approved yet, that it has a potential benefit for COVID-19 patients. So we received that emergency use authorization late last week, and uh, all of our 36 clinical trial sites have our technology, have been trained, and many of them are using it to treat COVID-19 patients. Do you have a sense, did you get a sense of how it's going so far uh, among those patients who have been treated with it? Well, I think it's important to keep in mind that the hemolung is a tool in the toolbox of the physician. And uh, the physician has to assess the clinical condition of the, of the patient and determine which tool or tools are most appropriate to treat the patient. Uh, and uh, what we are doing is getting anecdotal feedback from physicians that are indicating that the hemolung is doing what it's supposed to do. As an example, we had one physician last week indicate to our clinical specialists that the only reason that patient was alive is because they're on the hemolung. Uh, but understand that these patients have so much going on uh, in their bodies. Uh, we call them comorbidities. That um, even if they're treated with the hemolung or either, even if they're treated with a ventilator, the mortality rates uh, on these patients at the end of, of this disease process is very, very high. So we're hoping we can help bridge patients back to recovery. Uh, the earlier they intervene with the hemolung, the better. Uh, and we'll see what the outcomes are at the end of all of this. 
Yeah, we've heard so much about the shortage of ventilators, but then even when there are ventilators and patients wind up being put them on, put on them, the death rate, the morbidity rate has been really high. So part of the goal here is to maybe keep them off the ventilator in the first place? That's correct. Uh, the earlier you can intervene, uh, the greater your probability of keeping them off of the ventilator in total. Uh, and if they're on the ventilator, the goal is to protect their lungs while they're on the ventilator by removing carbon dioxide directly and hopefully, hopefully minimizing the need for that ventilator in the long term and getting them off in a much shorter uh, fashion than they would normally get off. Uh, Pete Como from A-Lung Technologies, congratulations for doing what you can to help uh, uh, meet this crisis. It's really exciting to see a homegrown Pittsburgh company having a role to play in all of this. Well, thank you, Bill. It's, uh, it's actually very rewarding for myself and our entire team to help with this COVID-19 pandemic, and we're going to do what we can to help out, and we appreciate the visibility that uh, you're bringing to this issue. Thank you very much. Well, congratulations again to all of you. Keep up the good work. Pete Como. thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. And I'm Bill Flanagan, and that's today's Online Extra.